What is going on? My name is Alprint, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Now, before we get into today's video, I just want to explain something. I had recorded the three videos a few days ago, and literally on that same day, later that night, this video came out. So if the next two videos that are coming out show that I have a beard, I had shaved that very night and recording this, recorded this video the next day. So I just wanted to just put that out there. But aside from that, we're gonna go ahead and react to another one of Kane Pixel's videos. This is Backroom's Damage Control. <laughs> and from what I'm only guessing based on the title, this takes place shortly after the event with uh, Peter, after he shot one of the, um, one of the uh, other, uh, I would say soldiers, but they're not soldiers. They're more like researchers um, and escaped. So I'm assuming this takes place shortly after that event because I have not seen the intro yet. So that truly being said, guys, I don't have anything else to add to this intro. And we're just going to go ahead and click play on this bad boy in three, two, one, go. Oh, I got to turn down my... We need immediate arms support in room 14C. My team now being held at gunpoint by a hostile. I repeat. Yeah, this does take place. That's right. It does take place after that incident. Different perspective. Shade a little bit. There's so much light, I can't see the screen. Yeesh. So he's dead. There's no way he survived the shotgun blast to the chest. There he goes. There goes Peter. He is running for it. Holy shit. They're gonna kill Peter. He dropped the gun. They are going after him. Wait. Did he just leave the back rooms and lock them in? I'd like to thank you all once again for your patience on this. It has been a stressful 15 hours for all of us here, and while he cannot currently be with us, Dr. Beck sends his apologies regarding the numerous inconveniences caused by our decision to keep you here overnight. Now, it appears that the situation has reached a point of some stability. Uh, we'll, we're still looking into a few things, uh, but I feel that we can now properly address what occurred without running into speculation. What happened last night should not have happened. Not here, not with us. What occurred was a gross misunderstanding that was the result of some severe information mismanagement. Even now, I believe most of you still have an incomplete idea of what took place last night. Uh, so uh, before I fill you in, I need to address the fact that there has been information deliberately withheld from many of you on the project. Uh, now, these choices were not made lightly and were done for only the best of reasons. However, I want to make it abundantly clear that following the events of last night, 
it has been proven to us that that method of conducting ourselves was not viable. So I'm coming to you now to correct this mistake and begin delivering the authentic order of events as we understand them. On the morning of March 1st, a team of four researchers was sent into the complex to conduct their routine layout analysis. George Levy, Marvin Lee, Ronald McCarthy, and Peter Tench. At around 12.25 p.m. Oh, this is when Peter went missing. The group realized that they had lost track of Tench while traversing the previously accessed branch of hallways. As you'll recall, this prompted an immediate withdrawal of response back to standard, followed by several days of significant search efforts. However, uh, those ultimately yielded nothing, and as far as any of us were concerned, Tench had simply vanished, leaving no physical trace. Now, for obvious reasons, that wasn't something that we could disclose to the public, so roughly two weeks following his disappearance, our security team was forced to put together a more acceptable cause of death that would keep attention away from this institute and provide closure to the family. So, that is all close to common knowledge, I presume. Not all of you were with us at the time of the incident, however, you're certainly aware of the effects it has had on our internal procedures over the past few months. Regardless, that was where Tensha's involvement in this came to an end. Or, at least, that's what we assumed. Because on May 8th, at approximately 5.30pm, a motion alert was sent out from the complex, which was closed off at the time. One of our senior engineers was sent down to assess the situation and discovered a male dressed in hazard gear who we were able to identify as Peter Tench. Immediately following this discovery, Tench was moved to a secure room on this floor where over the following days a select group of doctors were able to administer a panel of tests in order to determine what had happened to Peter in the two months he had been gone. Uh, oh, I thought he was gone for five months. Those tests yielded very little useful information. By all measures, Peter appeared to be in excellent health. However, we were still provided one very useful tool in understanding uh, how the situation unfolded from his perspective. Some of you may recall that on the day of his disappearance, Tench was his team's designated camera operator. Well, when we recovered him, he still had that camera in his possession, and in fact had documented the entire ordeal. Uh, the footage will be presented in its entirety later today. However, for the purpose of this discussion, I will only be highlighting key events. And then it goes back to that ep to that video. This I forgot the name of that video. Where Peter was last seen. They're not in view, but you can hear the others walking behind him. Now, as he approaches the branch on the right here, pay close attention to the audio. Guys, you hear this? This was this was early on in the in Kane Pixel's uh, series for the back rooms. This is like, I think this was like the fourth video he made when uh, they were doing exploration. I forgot if that was the name of the video. I forgot. It's been so long since I watched that video. Wait, did they? With him to gain a collective understanding of what had happened. 
They went to the spot where he disappeared to analyze it. However, there was still a very significant fact that Mr. Tench was considered legally deceased as a result of the cover story, and reversing that would be no easy feat. He understood this and was willing to cooperate while we looked for a way to reintegrate him without raising suspicion. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, that process ended up taking quite a bit longer than we had anticipated. And all the while, Peter was sucked out here, waiting our going by. We did our best to keep him engaged, but it is hard to combat the effects of cruel sensory deprivation on the human brain. And as a result, Peter's mental state took a toll. Not to a degree that was outright concerning at first, but around the end of week two, we noticed that he was starting to exhibit a number of behaviors common in patients diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Though we don't have reason to believe that Mr. Tench was afflicted with that condition. Whatever the case, while he didn't express it outright, from what we could gather, he appeared to have deluded himself into believing that he was still inside some sort of illusion created by the complex, and that we were secretly looking to do him harm. Mm. That would explain why he was crazy and went back into the rap back rooms. I, when I watched um, Game Theories, well, I should say um, Film Theories, uh, video on that and that was some of my thoughts i didn't i don't think i expressed them much in that video but it was like something i was thinking in the in the back of my mind because what was his mental state at this point i mean yeah he disappeared but i never realized that he was um ascertained and brought back into the main facility but i I thought he just ran back further in deep into the into the back rooms and hid there and dumped his hazmat suit. Because when we saw him again in the second to last back rooms video I watched, he was not in his hazmat suit, which I found very strange at first. But now things seem to be making a little bit more sense. I saw Kate on that matter. On the night of the 22nd, when while Tench was finally about to be transferred to a temporary above ground residence, he broke away from us and, using stolen credentials, forced his way back into the complex where he would go undiscovered until just last night, when he ambushed and violently attacked Team B in room 14C, leaving Dr. Bloom in critical condition. We can presume that during the two or so days Tent spent in the complex, he met door with the idea that he could somehow escape through an alternate threshold, but still held on to the belief that all of us here were working to trap him in some way, despite our actions saying exactly the opposite. Immediately after firing a single shot from the Remington 870 to Dr. Bloom's side, Tench fled the scene and headed to the threshold outpost, where he would turn the weapon on several more of you while progressing into standard and through the lower offices. Given the abrupt and chaotic nature of the unfolding situation, it took our security team several moments longer than he ideally should have to figure out what was happening. But thankfully, while Tench was passing through one of the empty labs next to storage, Dr. Maxwell was able to act quickly and managed to disarm him, accidentally discharging the weapon into the ceiling in the process. So, uh, I was going to say, he didn't shoot up. He shot down at the, at the researcher. However, Tench still managed to avoid apprehension, fleeing into the maintenance wing and evading our security staff by taking the freight elevator to the surface. Now, this situation could have played out very badly given the potential number of witnesses around the building at the time. But luckily for everyone involved, as far as we can tell, Tench was not noticed as he exited the property. Around five minutes later, our security team made it to the ground floor and began a thorough sweep in the direction of the hillside where cameras had last observed Tench. Now, there's no easy way to say this other than to just say it. They killed him. I am terribly sorry to inform you all, but Mr. Tench was found deceased halfway down the hillside. The result of an extreme blow to the head. It appears that 
while he was running through some brush, he failed to anticipate a sudden dip in the ground and tragically fell forward into a large rock. Given the circumstances, it was not something any of us could have anticipated or prevented. The tragedy of the entire situation undoubtedly remains, but Dr. Tench, regardless of how troubled he was in his final days, was a brilliant man who gave his all to this project. He would certainly not want us hindering it in his name. What we're doing here is so much bigger than any one person. It is the work of a unified effort, and we need to ensure that that is never lost sight of. That we hold on to the pre-established notion that Peter is and has been deceased. That is done, and there is nothing more to be extracted. Whoa. What just happened? That music. Okay. Oh God! Come on. <laughs> the videos. All his videos always end too suddenly for me to properly in the video <laughs> they're like there's no indication that the video is just about to end <laughs> but um that was not scary i was expecting there to be some scare side to it but now that that explains the entire situation of what happened earlier on in this uh in this series it all makes sense now and once again i know that all his Kane Pixels videos are most of them are always out of order, so none of them are always going to be first in the timeline. But it, assuming where damage control takes place, it takes place long before, um, years before the first, uh, from the first video, background fo found footage video. Um, but before we end today's video, I'm going to take a quick look in the description to see if there is a hidden video. So give me one second and I will be right back with you. Okay, so I had looked in the description. There was nothing, no video links there, only to his uh, main page where he uploads pictures and like some other stuff. And a link to the motion capture suit he was um, using, which is a motion capture suit I'm very well familiar with because... Uh, Loach Film uses that to make his Star Wars, his many of his uh, Unreal Engine videos. So, in terms of everything that has been seen and or said, that is it for the time being. Um, considering the le how long it's going to take for another backroom video to come out, it's probably going to be in like another month because Kane Pixel is pick is really putting these videos out there. So until. Next time, we are going to be leaving off the back rooms right here, and we'll be moving on to further back room videos once they come out. And really quick question for you guys. If you guys want me to check out uh, some of the funny videos of the back rooms that are out there, let me know in the comment section below, because I will indeed do it. So with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed th today's reaction video. Please like, subscribe, all that stuff, guys, and comment down below for whatever you want me to react to next. With that being said, like and subscribe all that stuff, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!